Welcome to your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast with Deanna Hobbs, founder of Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, broadcasting live from our headquarters studios in Buffalo, New York. Visit us online at empoweringeverydaywomen.org. In today's inspiration, I am posing a very important question. What are you saying? What are you saying? The Lord wants to educate us, re-educate us, because I believe in my heart that we already know the power of our words and how essential it is to watch what we say so we don't curse our destiny with our tongue. I don't know about you, but I want everything God has for me. And so I am eager to both receive and release this word. Because as I deposit seeds of inspiration into your heart, that means God is downloading those seeds into my heart. And I believe for both you and me, those seeds will bear much fruit. Amen. Welcome to this, your Tuesday, January 30th, 2024 edition of your Daily Cup of Inspiration podcast. My name is Deanna Hobbs. I'm your bestie from Buffalo your sister from another mister, your faith activator. And as always, I'm bringing you the biggest smiles and the warmest greetings ever. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I feel good down in my sanctified soul, excited to share what God has placed in my heart. I want to thank you for pressing play Thank you for being a part of this ministry. Thank you for connecting with me on social media. Thank you for your support of Empowering Everyday Women, a 501c3 nonprofit organization that spreads the gospel and meets humanitarian needs around the world. You can sow a tax-deductible donation of any size at empoweringeverydaywomen.org. Also, this podcast that we're listening to right now, it's available in written form at yourdailycupofinspiration.com and it can be downloaded and streamed on any network or platform where podcasts are heard or distributed. I have to hurry up with releasing this word. I'll do my best to be brief like those pastors, those preachers say, I, I won't be before you long if the Lord say the same. You know, most of the time the Lord don't say the same, though. <laughs> and they be up there for three hours. OK, but no, really, I don't believe it will take long, but it's a necessary word. And I pray that your heart is open to receive what thus saith the Lord. Also, God has been really, really speaking to me. And I'm so glad you're connected to me on social media at Facebook.com forward slash Deanna, D-I-A-N-N-A dot Hobbs, H-O-B-B-S. And I know that many people have social media tools that they prefer. Some of you love Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. Facebook, though, is my number one favorite tool. I'll just drop in anytime the Lord says something to me. You know, it can be three o'clock in the morning. Sometimes the Lord will wake me up and I will post what he said to you on my Facebook page. I also want to share with you because you are my family. I have begun to accept engagements. I've been to a few places and talked and um, I'm going to go to Ontario, Canada in March and minister the word of God. And so I thank the Lord for his faithfulness. And if we wait upon the Lord and trust him, he'll manifest his word in our lives. Because as you know, in 2019, I had to clear my whole calendar. My team canceled everything because I was in no condition after brain trauma and a mini stroke and that ordeal in the ICU to go before an audience and present. The Lord was working on me, but look at what God has done. Look where he brought me from. I got to put my own praise break right here. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel right churchy, um, but this is an important year of God preparing the saints for what he is releasing. And, and I'm so grateful that you are open to hear what the Lord is saying. 
I'm going to pray really quickly and we're going to dive in today. Father, we just thank you so much for your goodness and how you have caused us to come together once again. I know you sent your servant here to press play. It's not by an accident. It's not by chance. But you have destined and assigned them to be here. So anoint me for this assignment. Give me what to say. And I thank you for this life transformational word in Jesus name. Amen. So, Bestie, um, during my morning devotion, I received an unmistakable message from the Lord. He said, tell my people to watch their mouths. There are some things I want to do and release in their favor in the year 2024. Remind them not to curse their destinies with the words they say. As both a listener and a messenger, I feel compelled to bring this word to you. You know, our speech is a vessel and God is urging us to steer it with care so we don't disrupt the wonders he's orchestrating in our lives. Amen. Together, our collective heart's cry must be, yes, Lord, we refuse to miss out on the divine plans laid out for us. Earlier, there is an experience my daughter, Kaya, shared. She recently listened to a motivational speaker who, despite his enthusiasm, was still grappling with the intricacies of English as his second language and wound up delivering a message with a comical twist. In his zeal to empower, he urged the audience to embrace their ambitions, hold fast to hope, and persist against the odds. All good things. Yet, in a twist of phrase that would have grammar teachers double-taking, he enthusiastically concluded with, give up. And for good measure, he doubled down, give up. And thankfully, Bestie, a light bulb moment (laughs) rescued him from his fumble, and he quickly revised his statement. I mean, don't give up. And he laughed, and I thought, good for him. He caught it. In the grand scheme of things, it was a harmless stumble on his path to mastering a new tongue, right? We can't help but smile at this innocent mix-up, knowing full well the spirit behind his words was sincere and well-meaning. But this is also a good reminder that learning a new language, for example, the language of faith, is full of these little trips and stumbles. And I think this anecdote serves as a gentle reminder that Our pursuit of fluency, whether in a second language or the language of God's kingdom, is a journey filled with learning curves. Speaking the language of faith, think about it. Speaking the language of faith, words that echo the promise of scripture, affirmations that align with the teachings of Jesus, and declarations that stand firm on God's word in the face of fear, is not our native dialect. That's why we've got to be diligent students embracing this divine lexicon with patience and practice. For a moment, Bestie, consider your words and ask, are the things I'm saying a reflection of worldly fears or of heavenly faith? Am I speaking declarations of despair or pronunciations of promise? Are my words painting a picture of defeat or victory? God is challenging us today to retrain our tongues, shifting our words from worldly despair to divine assurance. Consider Job, a man esteemed for his integrity and righteousness, yet he found himself overwhelmed by life's severe trials. In a moment of profound anguish, while feeling the sting of life's trials, he vented in Job 10 and 1, I loathe my very life. Therefore, I will give free reign to my complaint and speak out in the bitterness of my soul. Wait, isn't this the very same man who declared in Job 13 and 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him? Sure is. Look, if we're honest, We have no room to judge Job. Our own lives sometimes mirror Job's dichotomy where the struggle between complaint and trust plays out through our words. Truth is, we all have moments of weakness where we, like Job, might express our frustrations candidly. But here's the thing we must remember. 
While we do have free reign, meaning we possess the liberty to express our grievances, as believers, we must allow the Holy Spirit to reign over our hearts and our speech so we don't undermine or sabotage the destiny God has for us. During intense trials, Bestie, hear this. Without the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, according to Ephesians 6 and 17, bitterness can take root in our hearts, overshadowing all that is good. Doubt-filled, fear-filled, pessimism-filled words will feed the weeds of bitterness in the gardens of our hearts, choking out our divine joy, peace, hope, and faith. Words of unbelief can choke out destiny. The scriptural account of Zacharias in Luke 1 really drives home the lesson on the power of our words. This priest, while performing his sacred duties in the temple, was visited by the angel Gabriel, who brought the extraordinary news that Zacharias' wife, Elizabeth, would bear him a son named John. John the Baptist would be the forerunner of Jesus, preparing the way for the Messiah. Pretty incredible, yes? Despite this being the very miracle Zacharias had prayed for, according to scripture, he responded not with faith that his son was on the way, but with skepticism, asking the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. You think Zacharias would be over the moon, break out in a shout and start speaking in tongues. But nope, he's doubtful. He basically says, Prove it. Prove it? Uh Uh-oh. That wasn't the language of the kingdom. So God silenced Zacharias, not out of punishment, but to safeguard the promise from the poison of doubt. My, my. The Lord said through Gabriel, you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. This account is a testament to the gravity with which God views our words. He doesn't want us to give voice to disbelief when faced with his promises. And so, Bestie, God sent me today to tell you to believe. Believe even when the wait feels endless. Believe even when the promise seems improbable. Believe even when your circumstances scream otherwise. Believe for God is faithful to fulfill his word. Trust in the assurance of Habakkuk 2 and 3, for the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Believe in the might of God's word. Believe in the certainty of his plans. Believe in the abundance of his grace. Believe and speak with the conviction of one who knows the power of God's unerring promise. Let your words be vessels of faith, brimming with the certainty that God will do just what he said. Believe and let that belief shape every word you utter, every prayer you whisper, every thought you harbor. Believe for in belief lies the key to unlocking the fullness of God's favor. It's through belief that we step into everything God has for us. To remind you of this truth, I'm stirring Hebrews 11 and 6 in the New International Version as the sweetener in your cup of inspiration, which says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. As you drink down the contents of your cup, let your words reflect what you know about God, that he is able, he is faithful, and there is no failure in him. Speak words of life over your destiny and watch God release the manifold blessings he already has in store for you. What are you saying? Now let's pray. God, I pray for this, my sister, this, my brother. We believe your word. We stand on your promises. We confess that your truth stands forever. And if you said it, you will do it. Please help them to resist doubt, fear, and double-mindedness and declare your faithfulness. Today, I thank you by faith 
for the blessings you are releasing to them this year. We receive it with an open heart full of expectation and gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen. Your daily cup of inspiration has been brought to you by Empowering Everyday Women Ministries, where we fuel your faith every day. For more information, log on to yourdailycupofinspiration.com.